Uh, give it a second. It'll load in a tidbit here. That's how it works. It is an old game. An older game, but I think it it stands out on its own. It registers the, the passage of time. That's what I'm looking for. And it's a amazing game. And I want to show you, and I'm actually going to be showing you the, in my opinion, the best starter game, uh, the best starter character that you can have. And I'm going to be explaining all of, practically going to give you a tutorial of the game and how it works and what are your options. And firstly, I'm going to be explaining the setting. It is a medieval setting with very soft fantasy elements. There is no magic, but there are very, there are kind of magical weapons. And there are only human here. And then there's the Noldor, who are practically elves. So these two races. Um, the Noldor, the elves have their own kingdom called the Noldor. And the humans have multiple kingdoms, multiple states, each with their own culture, their own specializations, their own weapons. It's pretty dope. And what I have here are a lot of uh, data and paper, uh, paper that I wrote down while playing the game, just calculating best stats, what stats to prioritize in for the build. We're practically going to be looking to make this world our bitch. We're practically going to be... <laughs> going to be uh, hoping to conquer the world. That's going to be the end goal plan. And it is hard. It's easier said than done. That's what I'm going to say. It's easier said than done because we're starting at the bottom of the food chain. We're practically a peasant. No uh, noble relations, no nothing. We'll, we're just one person and we're going to try to gather a band of misfits and run around and well, conquer the world. There are different steps and you have a lot of options on what to do. Okay, so we're in the game. This is it. Um, just going to look through. Okay, combat speed is okay. Battle size is okay. Right. Perfect, and let's go into a new game. First off, we need to create our character, and depending on the choices that we make, uh, we'll have different stats, and I'm gonna show you exactly which stats, uh, in my opinion, give you the best starting position. You will be weaker combat-wise, but that shouldn't be a problem if we train a little bit. So, going back to the options that I wanted to mention that you have, um, you can be a merchant, you can be a raider, you can be a pirate, you can be um, a lord, you can be a mercenary for a faction, for lords, um, you can be whatever you want to be, and eventually you can become a king, which is motherfucking amazing. Anyway, welcome adventurer to Prophecy of Pandor. Before beginning the game, you must create your character. Be very careful. Your background choices here will forever impact your options and opportunities in Pandor. So firstly, we'll have to select um, our gender. We're going to be going male because last time I checked, I do possess a penis. Uh, you were born years ago and reside now in the land of Barkley. Far to the west and south of Pendor, your father was. Now, a little bit of background. Pendor is a continent. Barkley is another country to the southwest of the Pendor continent. And we are going to be deciding that our father was a rough and mysterious figure. Your father never told you of your mother, and indeed seemed very secretive about his past as you grew up in the poor section of Barclays Waterfront District. You received very little formal education. However, your father did teach you from a young age how to defend yourself and how to spot and avoid danger. When you were a bit older, he taught you about herbs, poisons, and antidotes, and how to keep someone alive when they were wounded. He never stepped in to offer you protection from the local bullies, but insisted that you fight your own battles. He would often leave for extended periods of time, offering no explanation of where he was, where he was going or saying when he would return. You raised yourself and sometimes had to resort to petty theft just to survive. Still, these difficult years made you streetwise, 
sharpted the secrets of cities and their shadowy back alleyways. In your youth, you had very little idle time as your father, and practically this is um, our school or our education, uh, what we did while growing up. Um, you have a lot of different options. These, um, for example, if you arrange to serve to a minor Barclay noble, you'll be able to become a noble and you'll have a lot of advantages in the game, like your own banner and relations with lords are gained more easily. We're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be a common person and we were left to fend for ourselves. As a boy barely emerged from childhood, you lived on the streets, doing whatever you had to just to survive. You begged, stole, and worked for gangs to earn your bread, living only from the day to day in a violent world, frequently only one step ahead of the law and others who wished you ill. Then, after what seemed an eternity, your life changed. You were given the opportunity to become, and again, this is the third choice, if you if you become a squire you receive military training a physician scholar will give you bonus into medical skills and we'll talk about the skills very in depth as we move on um it is it takes a little bit to set up the game but um i promise it's worth it let's go with a bard Though this, the distinction felt sudden to you, somewhere along the way you had become a man, and the whole world seemed to change around you. You set out on your own with nothing but your interest, instrument and your voice. It was a, pu it was a, pure ex a poor existence, and you spent many a hungry night when people failed to appreciate your music. But you managed to get by on your music alone. As the years went by, you became adept at playing to the drunken crowds in the taverns, and even better at talking anyone into whatever you wanted. But as the fates would have it, everything in your world changed suddenly. You had no choice but to leave the lands of Barclay and strike out for Pendor, because... Now, for, from a role-playing perspective, I would love to go with you received a message that your father has died, but the best stats is because of a series of unfortunate events. So we are going to be min-maxing a little bit. The story is still pretty cool. And let's see. A series of unexpected cancellations and lack of patron support, coupled with a false accusation, tarnish your reputation beyond all repair in Barclay. You find yourself effectively locked out of upscale taverns and inns, and thus the ability to make a living. The lure of new lands, new adventure, and new patrons find you booking passage to the lands of Pendor. And now we board the ship and settle the die in. has been cast. You have set sail for Pendor. Okay. Um, we will allow myself to, uh, to quit without saving, so okay. Because, you know, streaming, I need to work on that. So this is the, your character sheet screen. These are your skills. You have attributes, skills, and proficiencies. I'm sorry for those who already played Prophecy of Pandora, uh, or Mountain Blade in general, you already know these, but I really wish to explain these. Uh, strength will influence your combat stats. Agility will influence your pathfinding and weapon mastery proficiencies. Intellect will uh, influence practically um track your tracking your pathfinding your spotting uh inventory management surgery first aid engineer pers and that's it the last four are in the character in the charisma tree uh which influence persuasion prison management leadership and trade so what do you want to do here is we have a shit ton of agility and we're looking to gain let me check. We're looking to gain 18 in agility. Each level you receive one attribute and several um, skill points to add. I think one or two. If you add one point into intellect, uh, you'll receive an additional skill point. So right now, oh, oh, also, also, you can't max these out. For example, you see, I have power throw at three, which influences your slingshots, your rocks, your spears, your javelins. I can't upgrade it beyond three because I don't have enough strength. And the thresholds are uh, from three into three into three. Um, for example, if I upgrade this to nine, I will now have, um, still not be able to upgrade this to four i need a 12 
to upgrade the power throw, if it makes sense. Um, I'm going to reset the changes. We're going to be going for the name... Well, let's go for Revolve for now. That's that's who we are. I'm going to be putting one point into Intellect. There we go. And now, let's see. Power Draw will be upgrading on our own. Power draw, power Strike sorry, is your ability to melee. And we are going to become a Mounted Knight. Mounted Melee character. Um, I'm also tempted to go Power Draw, which is your Bow and Arrow skills. But not right now. Not right now. We need to focus on certain things. And the reason I went with these choices is because you receive looting level 7, which is amazing. Looting increases the amount of loot obtained by 10% per skill um, from battles. And that is just incredibly powerful. You'll have incredibly rare drops going for you. You'll practically get on your feet faster. And in Prophecy of Pandora, you need to get on your feet as soon as possible because there are huge raiding parties uh, roaming the land that you can't take on. You won't be able to take them on even if we're level 20 or 30 or something like that. You'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about as we go in. So, right now, leadership is okay. Prison management is okay. Persuasion is good. Uh, we'll need... Pathfinding is perfect. Okay. We'll need surgery. Each point to this skill gives a 4% chance that mortally struck units will be able to survive will instead survive just be wounded and they'll recover this is very good because you'll be going through a lot of units don't get attached to your soldiers i try not to but they will die so we're going to be upgrading that to three next up pathfinding is good it's perfect we're going to be upgrading that later horse archery we're not going to be going for horse archers riding is okay athletics is okay we'll need two points into shield and weapon master and power strike let's get upgrade one and you'll see uh you don't have to these influence your party but you don't have to max all these on your main character because you'll receive hero units as you go on and they'll be able to specialize into some of these trees that you won't with your main character so practically we'll have a party medic we'll have a party engineer we'll have a party tracker hunter stuff like that so keep that in mind um, I'm going to go for 9 strength and one more point into agility. And that's perfect. It's quite balanced. And we're going to be working agility to 18. And afterwards, I think we're going to go pretty heavily into strength until 21. It's very hard to survive on your own in this game. So you'll have to be a buff motherfucker. Right, so next up... No, not first aid. Inventory management, we'll put another point there because we'll need it. And we'll need trainer later. Trainer will help upgrade your troops, but we'll go for that later. Iron Flesh I can ignore. Practically, you can ignore Iron Flesh. It just adds two uh, hit points to your health. It's not enough. It's not enough. You'll get your ass handed to you. Now, let's go. One more point in Power Strike. Sure. Now, we are going to be focusing on one-handed weaponry. We're going to go sword and board as much as possible. And now we need to arrange our face. Again, this is a pretty old game, but please try to give, give the graphics a pass. It's pretty good. So we're going to make ourselves as young as possible. Dark hair. Um, let's select a skin. You know what? I think... Hmm, something. Okay, the blue eyes and white dragon. We're gonna go for this. Uh, let's give him a sexy beard. Alright, and give him some not so gay hair. No. No. Maybe. You know what? I kinda like that. I'm not gonna fuck with these. Actually, I'm, I'm even going to reset the model to here. And we're good to go. By the grace of the divine, you arrive in Pendor, a land plagued by constant strife for over 150 years. You have accepted a daunting challenge to stave off the influence of evil 
reunite the warring factions of the Old Kingdom and create a new possibility for Pandor, as echoed by the Manned Warder Madigan. These are dangerous lands where many powers, great and small, vie against one another for supremacy. Here you will find honor and nobility, but also deceit and skullduggery. There will be valorous knights and black-hearted assassins. You will leave your past behind to start a new life. Pender is not your typical medieval country. Women and men have equal chances of successes and failures in Pandor. If you succeed, you will create another destiny, a new possibility in the infinite dimensions of reality. Your choices may create a new thread in the weave for the oracle to choose and offer the possibility that your actions may save us all. Drawn by the stories you hear about Pandor and its kingdoms, you join which caravan or which ship? We can go to Sarleon in the Kingdom of Sarleon, Ravenstern in the Kingdom of Ravenstern. These are cities, by the way. Torba in the Dishar Principalities, Javisholm in Fearsvane, and Janos in the Empire. Now, these are the vain factions. They're usually all at war. Yo, Feeder, what's up? What's up, Zulog? Welcome to your stream. Please stick around. This game is amazing. You'll love it. Um, and... I'm going to explain all of them once we get to the main world map. I'm just going to go for the Kingdom of Sarleon because they're in the middle of things. You travel by caravan through the heartlands of Pandor. Green shoots of wheat are beginning to push through the dark soil of Sarleon's rolling plains. The land here is rich but troubled, as the occasional burning village bears witness. The caravan avoids the woods of Laria, where desperate men have taken refuge and the mysterious Noldor lurk. You crest a ridge and catch sight of the town of Sarleon, its rooftops shining golden in the last rays of the setting sun. Seen videos of it. Well, I'm not sure if you've seen videos of the Prophecy of Pandor. So, this is the world map. We're right here, this boyo right here. And we're right next to the capital of Sarleon, the Sarleon Kingdom. Sarleon, which is kind of a stupid name. Um, let me explain. We have the Ravenstern in the north. They're practically... You're, if, if you watch Game of Thrones, they're practically the Nords from there. Uh, they're, they're specialized in bow and arrow tactics. Their uh, fields are very mountainous areas, so they excel at bow and arrow tactics. It's ranged, their range units are to die for, and I'm probably going to be going for a archer army. We're on that side. All right, then we have the Sarlian. Just thought I'd say hi before falling back asleep. Woke up because of a nightmare. 5 a.m. here. Well, I'm sorry you had a nightmare, dude, and I hope you have a good night. Sleep. And thanks for saying hi. Peace out, home dog. All right, so Sarlian, it's in the central area. Oh, I'm actually, I sh actually should move. I, I'm going to move the webcam a little bit. Once I get into a fight, I'll need to decide where I should put the webcam, either in the top right corner or somewhere. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second because you're not seeing all of the buttons down here, and I want to fix that. So, Sarleon, uh, central area. These were the former Pendor kingdom. So think of it in the past, Pendor was completely united under one banner, and that's the kingdom of Pandor. That's practically our goal, to try and reunite. reunite. Um, the Sarleans were practically the remains of the old kingdom. Uh, these were the, the ruling noble house of Pandor. They're specialized in cavalry units. They have the best cavalry in the game. And they're practically the knights with the huge lances, and they just roll in and ruin your day. Then to the west, on the coastline, we have um, the Fjordsvane, who are your typical Viking faction. They, don't ha they do not specialize in horses, and they do not specialize in archery. They're very good in melee combat. Their infantry is incredible. Their Huskarls are incredibly dangerous, and they'll fuck you up. Then to the south... West and well, actually, directly south and southeast, we have the Dashar principalities. These are your typical uh, nomad population. These are the Huns. 
Uh, they have very good mounted archers and they just roll around, they go in circle towards you and they just fill you full of arrows. Also, they're practic they're also very balanced. Their infantry is okay, their cav their melee cavalry is okay. Um, and but their horse archers are the better the better unit. And then to the southeast we have the Empire. Uh, which has um, a lot of Roman influence. Um, these are specialized in crossbow units and uh, javelins and spear throwers. So if we're not going to be joining any of the factions yet, each faction has a lot more story to it because um, we're going to be on our own for now and we'll look to make a name for ourselves, get stronger, make gain reputation and fight our way for now. Let's just look at our inventory screen and see what we have. So I have a hunting crossbow, which is good. A common iron sword, basic bolts, and a loot that I can use as a shield. Um, we have a leather armor. The items you receive are, again, based on your choices from the beginning of the game. And we do have a horse, which is an incredible plus for the game. Uh, right now, we are going to be going to Sarleon. Welcome to Prophecy of Pandor. This mod is designed for the experienced player who has mastered the fundamentals of combat. This mod is not designed to be easy. Keep that in mind. Um, for those of you who are ready for this experience, we hope you enjoy P.O.P. Prophecy of Pandor. And the rest are just credits to the developers. Okay, so we went to the town of Sarleon. These are our options. Um, there's a tournament in town, which is awesome, but I don't have enough renown, so we'll need to kill a few bandits, roam the lands a little bit, help people out, and once we have enough renown, we will be able to join tournaments for very good prizes. So our objective will be to get a little bit stronger we're going to be going in the arena and train a little bit and this way i'm going to be able to arrange the webcam and show you exactly how battle works here i think this is the main attraction so we're going to be entering the arena the main attraction to mountain blade in general is that you have a either a third view perspective or a first person perspective we're going to be keeping it third person mostly and you're just one soldier in the, the army i'm going to be going into the sound options and put the sound lower so you guys don't die uh we'll put the battle size around 302 that's a good balance there if you go too much and you're attacked by, let's say, a 500 army, you're just going to get steamrolled. But but then again, that should be your fault. Also, the game gets gets a lot uh, very unstable as you go with a bigger army size. So let's keep it for like this for now. Um, return to game. To what do I owe this pleasure? There's some voice acting in the game, but it's not very good. Good day, friend. If you came to watch the tournaments, you came in vain, and there won't be a tournament here anytime soon. Tournaments? So they hold the tournaments here? Yes, but only distinguished fighters can join. You should see this place during one of the tournament fights. Everyone from the town and nearby villages come here. The crowd becomes mad with excitement. Anyway, as I said, there won't be an event here soon, so there isn't much to say. Except there is an official duel every now and then, and of course we have melee fights almost every day. And we're going to be interested in those melee fights. Tell me about them. The fighters and knights get bored waiting for the next tournament, so they have invented the training melee. It is a simple idea, really. Fighters jump into the arena with a weapon. There are no rules, no teams. Everyone beats at each other until there is only one fighter left standing. Sounds fun, hey? Is there a reward? There is, actually. Some of the wealthy townsmen offer prizes for those fighters who show great skills in the fights. If you can beat three opponents before going down to 50 dinars, that's the the money in this game uh you'll get 100 dinars for striking down at least six and so on and so forth if you're the last man standing you'll receive 2000 dinars which is quite a hefty amount of cash which we'll try to go for because um we'll need some better equipment pronto can i join too haha <laughs> you have to be out of your mind not to of course the melee fights are open to all actually there is going to be a fight soon you can go and hop in if you want to so by the way, we're probably not going to be able to get to 
the 200, 2000 mark, but we're gonna be trying. Okay, so this is it. I'm just gonna let them fight a little bit. And I'll decide now where to put my webcam. I think I'm gonna put it at the top right corner. So give me a second here. Moving this to here. And we'll see if that's okay. We'll see if that works out. Sorry. If you have a better suggestion, please go for it. But right now, we'll keep it here. And let's fight! And I think the sound is still too loud a tad bit. Please, if the sound is too loud, let me know. I'm gonna be modifying it on the fly. Alright, so... There are four directions where you can attack. An upper swing, a side swing, other other side, and then you can also thrust. And depending on your weapon, this is... Yeah, practically this is a thrust. If you press down, it's a thrust move. What we're having is a staff, which is considered a pole arm. And we're gonna be fighting people to the death. Come on, boy. You right click, if you right click, you're gonna block. And then you can select with the mouse in what direction you wanna attack. I've set it up so I attack by the direction keys from the ACDW button. All right. Well, we're doing pretty good for ourselves, but I have a lot of practice. I have a lot of practice in this game. There we go. I played this game for quite a long while. A lot of mods, a lot of games. I fucking enjoy it every time. This is this is the kind of game that I return to. I return to a lot. Slap. There we go. We beat nine. We have twenty six remaining. Come on. Come on. Get beaten, son. There we go. Good. Chest hair activated. All right. Oh shit! There's a bow and arrow guy. We we'll need to sidestep it as much as possible so he doesn't hit us. Much easier with a shield, but what you gonna do? When you get into the arena, it's completely random. You can receive a two-handed sword, a bow and arrow, a um, sword and board. And the staff that we're having right now. Slapped. You can jump by pressing space, space bar, but I don't recommend it. I just do it for style points. And there's the sword and board. The sword and board is the most well-rounded. Remember, they also fight amongst themselves, so use that to your advantage. Boop. Get jiggy with it, boy. There you go. Oh, boy. No, no, no. Thank you, lady. Beat him. Beat him with a stick. Come on. Hush up. Ninja style. Thank you for saving me. I almost received a, a staff to the face. Okay, two on one. Perfect. And boop, good. Go. Fight amongst the ourselves. Give me a little bit of time to recover. There's no life regen in this game. There are other mods who have life regen, but this one does not. All right. We also receive a lot of experience. In the bottom left side, you'll be able to see the damage that we're doing. And as we survive more, these guys become a lot stronger. Fight amongst yourselves. I'm going to be killing the rest. Shit, they're both attacking me, aren't they? Damn. That was good. We did it. Whew. Okay, Fenring. Congratulations, champion. Your fight, there was something to remember. You managed to be the last fighter standing, beating down everyone else. 
And of course, you won the grand prize of the fights. 2,000 dinars. Mmm, yeah, baby. And you can practically do this in an infinite loop. It's a very, it's a very good way to gain money early game. Um, gonna be up, gonna be leveling up. Pardon our character. Gonna be putting one more point in agility, and we're gonna be upgrading weapon master. The weapon master determines the speed, either your attack speed, which your weapon, and it also increases the proficiency limits. So we are gonna be going for. Well, the idea is we need shield 3, and we're not going to be putting any more points in shield, because that's going to be enough. And we are going to be going for riding 6. We're looking to get riding 6. Uh, this will unlock the most powerful mounts in the game. You'll be able to find them randomly at, in fights or at, at the merchant shops in the marketplace, in towns, which we're going to be visiting right now. For now, we're going to be putting more points into one-handed weapons, and give me some pole arms. Maybe we'll go for a lance. Let's go to the marketplace, and here you can